Oh my gosh, did you guys know that there is a new novel non-hormonal medication currently being studied in phase three clinical trials to help decrease the frequency and severity of hot flashes? There is. In this video, I'm gonna tell you all about the new medication currently being studied and a little bit about my thoughts on it. So if you're interested, stick around. If you don't know me, you should. I'm just kidding. I'm Dr. Heather Hirsch. I have been hosting this YouTube channel for over a year now. And here on my YouTube channel, Health by Heather Hirsch, we talk all things menopause, midlife, perimenopause, and hormone therapy. I have amazing playlists, which you should definitely check out if you're in perimenopause or menopause and a ton of stuff on hormone therapy. Now, I don't necessarily think that everyone needs hormone therapy or that hormone therapy is right for every single person. And certainly there are women who have contraindications to estrogen, but it is my job to teach and dispel the myths, especially around the safety and efficacy of hormone therapy, of which, spoiler alert, it's safer than you think it is and it's more efficacious than you think it is. But if you are one of those people for whom you don't wanna take estrogen, you have contraindications, or you simply are just interested in menopause science, you're gonna to wanna to learn about this new medication. This new medication is a KNDY receptor antagonist, or a neurokinin-3 receptor antagonist, or it blocks something in your hypothalamus, the part of our brain that controls our core body temperature. And when it's going to block that core body temperature, it's gonna help us regulate those hot flashes, something that happens as we go into menopause. Now, this is a non-hormonal medication and it's not going to work the same way the other non-hormonal medications on the market work. The other non-hormonal medications on the market are actually in the SSRI class. That means they block the reuptake of serotonin in our brain. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter that can help us with mood. That's why they're in the antidepressant class, but at those low doses can help blunt hot flashes. So this medication is going to be used to help control hot flashes, but it doesn't contain estrogen and it's not in the SSRI or SNRI class. This medication has gone through phase two clinical trials. And in phase two clinical trials, uh, what the point of those is to do is to ensure the safest dose. So now that there is a narrowed it down safety dose, they're going into phase three clinical trials where they're going to test this medication in a larger group of women. And in a phase three trial, they may also compare it to a placebo. Although at this point, they're just looking at just that use of medication to see if it helps control the frequency and severity of hot flashes. Now, there's a couple interesting thoughts that I have on this medication. The first is that this is really exciting because anything that we have in the arsenal to help women who are suffering in menopause is wonderful. So this is so exciting that there's going to be a newer non-hormonal medication that's gonna be much better targeted you know, than the SSRI class that we currently use off-label, except for the medication Bristel, and a whole other slew of medications that we use off-label. So the fact that we're gonna have a more targeted, better effective medication with hopefully less side effects to blunt hot flashes, to me is awesome. But I will say, you know, point number two is that the first round of clinical trials are going to be done in healthy, certainly symptomatic, but otherwise healthy individuals. And where I think this medication would be really wonderful uh, to see if it's safe and effective is in women who have a clear contraindication to estrogen, which would definitely be our breast cancer patients. So those women undergoing chemotherapy or those who are breast cancer survivors. And included in that is other uh, survivors of other gynecologic cancers, cancers in general, and then women who can't use estrogen because of history of blood clot or uh, a pulmonary embolism, which is a clot in your lungs. So the first uh, phase three clinical trials are going to be done in otherwise healthy volunteers. So it's still gonna be probably a while before you know there are some clinical trials in these groups of women in particular that we wanna see if this medication could be used in because that is the group of women where I definitely think there is the 
most, uh, there's the greatest opportunity for something novel that's not going to interfere with their other medications or chemo or radiation that could be really helpful because it's for those group of women that my heart always goes out to because there isn't always a big, you know, repertoire of options. I don't know when there's going to be studies of this medication in those groups of people, but I certainly do hope that it is on the horizon. And my third thought is that while I'm really excited about this, I certainly don't want this to overshadow or be a replacement for hormone therapy. And again, while I say hormone therapy is certainly not for everyone, it's not that everyone needs it, but it does benefit a significant amount of women who choose to start it. And if you've been watching my channel for any period of time, you know that there is certainly a lack of education among clinicians, including gynecologists and internists and family doctors about the safety and how to use hormone therapy appropriately. And so while I am excited that there is going to be another option out there, I still am going to be crusading, trying to teach about the safety and efficacy of hormone therapy. And I have big plans on how to do this, but I really do think that if you're otherwise healthy and you don't have any contraindications to estrogen and you're considering it, you're really suffering, it does have other benefits besides for helping the symptoms that you can feel. We've talked a lot about how estrogen can help symptoms you can't feel. And if you wanna know more about that, I definitely recommend checking out this video here, the one I did on bone health, as well as this video here, the one I did on estrogen and heart health. So estrogen does have many other benefits, um, including um, brain health as well and pelvic floor health. So I have a couple other videos that I'll link here and definitely you should check out my hormone therapy playlist if that's something that you are interested in. Thank you guys so much for joining me here over on my channel on YouTube. I love the community that we're building. I love all of your comments and questions. Keep them coming because even if I don't get to answer each one individually, I read them all and you guys provide me with endless hours of content that I cannot wait to get out to you. So thank you for subscribing. If you haven't done already, please do. It is free to do so. You can always change your mind later and definitely follow me on Instagram because that's how you're going to stay up to date on all the current projects that I have ongoing, of which there are many and I have really a lot of exciting announcements coming out in 2021 and 2022. So please follow me over there. Thank you guys again, and I'll see you next week for a brand new video. Bye everyone.